the year 2073. An 83-year-old Brian reflects on a fulfilling life. I remember in my day, round about aught three, you could turn on the radio and hear such classics as In the Club, Right There. And boy, did we all know that Stacy's mom had it going on. <laughs> All I know is that a Seven Nation Army couldn't hold me back. Was Grandpa in the war? World War Three or World War Four? What the hell's the radio? I used to swing for hours looking for Mary Jane all over New York. You know, Doc Ock and whatnot. Sometimes I'd get on my horse and Arthur Morgan and I would go town to town on horseback looking for a score. Boy, it would make my thumbs sore. What did he and Arthur do? Children, <laughs> love is love. Anyway, enough <laughs> chat. Take Grandpa to shuffleboard. I got a motherfucking scores to settle. <laughs> Guten Tag and bienvenidos, <laughs> listeners. And you guessed it, we're talking top five retirement activities. And do we have the jolliest assholes this side of the Mississippi to explore these time killers? After making a fortune in wind and solar futures, he retired with a healthy stack and knees still good enough to get him around. It's Mitch Brinkman. How are you, sir? Oh, thank God. I was hoping. I was like, oh, come on. Have, can I get around with those knees? And you said I could get around, so I'm very happy. Um, I can't wait to talk to you guys about my future. Um, and I'll be honest, y'all's future hell, So, because I will be a um, – Bastard. I'll be a strange old man, I think. Is the best way to say, so. You're a strange young man. I don't expect anything to do. <laughs> and his challenger retired as the fifth full owner of Twitter, only escaping with a cool eight hundred billion, about That's forty-five dollars in twenty twenty-two money. Inflation's a killer, Ouch. folks. It's Nathan Hennon. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Getting older every day. Okay. He's going to die soon. All right. If you all want to get blown to the moon, head on over to ubersynco.com to listen and watch this and any other fine episode. And did you know you can even submit your suggestions for upcoming shows? That's what you oh. call audience interaction. Most oh. of you know how this all works by now, but if you're new, you'll figure it out. I promise. But the two contestants you just heard are going head to head, and I'll be judging their selections accordingly. If both have the same answer on their list, well, we have an Uber stare down where only one may snag all three points for the answer while the other gets a big fat zero. But zero, not a death sentence here because as host, I get to institute a house rule for today's game. Bonus points who talks like Reagan the most. Now, come on. <laughs> yes. Well, Brian, and, I, I love this rule. And, and, and I love it for the American people who are going to enjoy lowered <laughs> gas prices and, and so much money that everyone's going to have a speedboat <laughs> and a cabin and a horse. You can name Chestnut or Cupcake or people about it anything you want i'm regretting this already <laughs> but don't forget to stay with us until the end of the show where i brian ernst will list off my fast five ways i could make my first million according to the psychic down the block Ooh. now we had a pre-show yodel off and someone mm -hmm. took their recola today so mitch you will go first yodel -ay, yodel -ay, yodel -ay. um <laughs> I just want to say, too, uh, as a way to think about death and how short your life uh, is, every second you live is a smaller percentage of your total life than the second prior. So, guys, get out there, grab it by the tail, and drag it along with you. You know, uh, keep keep chucking, baby. Okay, my number five. Here we go. Um, that was great Inspi advice. Inspiring. Say, that was keep chucking, yeah. bitches. <laughs> my, my number five top. Uh, top retirement activity. I cannot wait to start doing this because, of course, I'm going to be making my own cottage cheese in retirement. I cannot wait. Um, there's only a few ingredients you need. It's milk. It's a pot. It's vinegar. And it's salt. You just cook up the milk. You pour in the vinegar and the salt, and you let it sit for a while. And you just, you just strain it out. And then you got freaking cottage cheese, um, which, you know, as old people, we will all need and want every single morning because it's the number one uh, breakfast served uh, at retirement communities across the country. I will put pineapple on mine. I will put mango on mine. I will put pear on mine. Uh, you know, something soft, 
uh, easy for the teeth, of course. But really, <laughs> the only question that I need to think about and consider here for my future retirement activity is how big should I make my curd? You know, because like you can you can get larger curd uh, cottage or you can get small curd cottage. And I personally think that I would I would um, breakfast the best with it with a large curd. Um, personally, you do how, how big like do you large, guys think you look like a large curd man? I'm a, I'm yeah. a small curd guy. You're a small curd yeah. guy. Okay. So just based on like, you know, my energy, my spirit, how big should, how big is my curd? Do you think like a, like a cheese puff? Uh, that's a big curd. Yeah. That's holy cow. Got literally got a big cheese curd, curd, energy. curd. BC. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to start packaging this too. Just like a homemade, like. Keep it easy. Just put in a Ziploc bag, throw a sticker on it says like, you know, uh, BCC or Brinks Cottage or something like that. And then I'll be selling this. So I'm excited to do that. Um, I'll be buying a lot of milk uh, just before it expires too, or maybe just the day it expires when it gets cheap. Um, then your manufacturing yeah. costs are, are zero, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and if I need to, I'll go to like an Amish grocery store where they sell, you know, um, even, you know, dented goods or whatever um and so yeah this I'm, I'm excited for this and i'll be i'll be a ripped old guy too because i have a lot of protein uh swimming through my veins so you could just get a cow i mean yeah but a cow you gotta keep somewhere and like although i could name it you're right it would be nice <laughs> <my cow. laughs> that's the only good saving point. grace is naming that's it. a good point that's a good point point. and what would reagan name his cow uh, old wet lips. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's Nancy. That's Nancy. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, is it her or the Clementine? <laughs> like the oranges from the grove next to my j- childhood home in Orange County. That's where I grew up. No, you grew up in the Midwest. No, I grew up in Orange Cutting County. Cutting off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan, what do you have for your number five? Oh, my number five. I am just going to have a time in my life solving cozy little murders. Oh. All right. I have you solving murders because it looks like you're going to start a dick business. Uh, but Mitch, <laughs> you're, what do you have for your number four? My number four uh, is robbing a bank. Crime, baby. Solving crimes or creating crimes. That's what this stare down is about. Ooh-hoo. You guys need to make your case. But Nathan drew first blood. Please, why are you solving murders? I like the phrase creating crimes instead of committing. Creating, it's more like they're an artisan crime boutique. Well, yes. not look, at, mainstream. look at Mitch, the fancy boy. He's definitely well, creating uh-oh. crime boutiques. Also, my crime is a job creator as well. So it's it, I'm, I'm just not the only one, you know, benefiting from my crime. So it's <laughs> trickle down crime economics. I mean, right? Who, who, who thought of that? Right? Come on. It's perfect. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna solve murder. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be retired. I'm gonna move to one of two places. I'm gonna move to the English countryside in a quaint little village, or I'm gonna move to an island and start like a little surfing shop where I and or that's on the oh. island. Or if I'm in the the quaint little village i might have like a, a bicycle repair shop that also doubles as like uh, an artisan bakery but wherever <laughs> i am i'm always i'm there's it's going to be like a resort area and a lot of people will be traveling from the uh largest metropolises in the world and they can be played by special guest stars uh because you know it's all it's all about the uh, murderer of the week and then i'm going to uh i'm going to always happen to be in a place where i can stick my nose in and then there's going to be a very very short of memory police department the, butt cheek. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the very very short of memory police officer who is always, um, you get your nose out of my crime scene, ass. quit meddling <laughs> yeah. in my... Rah. And I'll be like, but don't you remember for the last 47 straight weeks, I've been the one who actually cracked the case? And then they'll say, <laughs> and then at the end, they'll be like, oh, thanks. And then the next week at the beginning, I'll uh, stroll up as they're uh, you know, putting tape measure around the body and be like, you get out of my crime scene. And then we start over <laughs> again. Uh, and I'm just going to do that in perpetuity until I die. 
and, wow. uh, and every week you're going to catch the sheriff talking about the the murder at the bar at lunchtime. He'll be like talking to his friend and you'll walk by and be like, "Oh, oh notes, <laughs> notes, notes, notes." And be like, "Hey, forget what you forget what you heard over there." And then you're like, "Oh." And then you and, and you're in a blazer too, right? Of course. Patches on I, your, yeah, on with your the elbows. tweed patches yeah. on the elbows. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And and um, pretend like you didn't hear my itemized <laughs> list of evidence we found at the crime scene, you <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Get out of this establishment. And the, the, they'll always, I'll, I'll be trying something new in the artisan bakery and I'll try some new, uh, new ingredient. And then it'll turn out that same ingredient was found in the poison. Ooh. And so I just oh. learned the exact thing I need to know. We're going to rewind here. Nathan, when is the last time you baked? About 14 <laughs> months ago. All right. That's way sooner than I thought it was. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> that, that officially qualifies me as a baker. Someone that, that who does. has or I will mean, bake. I'm going to, I didn't say I'm going to be very good, but that's part of the charm. <laughs> and more about the bicycle. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be great at the bike stuff and the baking, you know, whatever. I mean, I've never surfed, but that's not going to hold me back from opening the surf shop. <laughs> on the but I'm going to have my, the, my team the... of locals and hopefully, hopefully I'll get the local clergy involved. There's, of course. Several, uh, there's, there's a few shows over in England where members of the clergy end up solving crimes. I'm thinking of three of them There's that follow this pattern. Uh, there's Father Brown, it's spin off Sister Boniface, and they just are meddling. <laughs> and then there's Grant Chester, and Grant Chester is the most fun one because the, the priest, he starts like horning his way into the, the, uh, constabulary and then he eventually becomes like really good friends and so with the police chief and then he's actually replaced by like another just good looking priest and then he becomes best friends with the police chief because that of course would happen twice in a row but <laughs> in, at the beginning there's always they just bend over backwards with the plot to like somehow get the an excuse for a, a priest to be in the interrogation room and it's always so far-fetched and convoluted and then by like the third season it's just like ah he's there <laughs> they just don't even try to explain it he's just always sitting there next week on <laughs> smoking hot priest <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, i think so, that so is that's my plan you, you hit the nail on the head with the best part here is you're creating a business where people vacation that is that's where you're going to make the most money and a lot of people disappear on vacation so Great marks. Great marks. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Anything else to add, Nathan? Well, I, I, I'm toying with the idea. This is going to be something I just decide on the fly uh, <laughs> when I get down there. No is, prep. In the end, is the twist ending that I've been murdering all of these people the whole time just to, to give myself mm -hmm. crimes to solve? We'll see. Put, putting them in your meat pies, because that's never been done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sell me, Mitchell. Yeah. Create create crimes instead of solving <laughs> crimes for me. <laughs> this is this is a classic thing. When you get retired, you know, you you're like, oh man, I got all this extra time. And sure, first you're like, let me catch up on my books and my stories, and like talk to my kids again, or like reconnect with my wife or my husband. You know, it's like, and then you do all that in like a week, and you're like, all right, let's <laughs> let's, let's let's figure something out. So I'm going to I'm going to do robbing a bank with my buddies and um, I'm going to be like the ringleader. And, um, you know, I will have worked at um, a company for 25 years. I had this great pension. It just I figure out the company went under. It got restructured. It's going away. So I need money fast. Yeah. I got another friend who's got a, a, a kid with a, and a grandkid that need money and they're about to be homeless. So like they need money, too. And another friend who's got a who needs a kidney and he needs money now because he also doesn't have any more insurance. Because he got fucked by his company or whatever. So we're all in it deep. So we're like, we, we have to rob this bank. So we plan a bank heist. And, but, you know, we're, we're just three, three white collar, you know, workers. We, we have no idea about a, a bank and how to do this kind of crime. So we go to the neighborhood bad boy, who's actually also my grandson. And he introduces us to like an exotic animal dealer who owns a pet shop. Maybe we're in Queens or something, but it's like right around the corner. And then this guy is like, you know, this guy teaches us. How to do the crime, how to do alibis, um, you know, uh, what to look for, how to take out a security camera. So here comes the day that we're going to rob the bank and we all get a cool suit, too. Of course, you got to have a suit and we all put on masks. Maybe we're, I don't know, um, the Rat Pack or we're three presidents, you or know. Or Ronald Reagan. Just, just tee it, yes, up. Tee it uh, up for hey, yourself. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I, he, there's a note here to, to give me all the money. Thank you. And then there's like, oh, John F. Kennedy, I'm going to shoot any motherfucker who doesn't stay 
flat to the ground, you know. Did, did you just become Australian, JFK? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it goes in and out. Boston is it, is Aussie. It is. It's the exact same accent. You really can't tell. Um, but then, you know, so we go through all this thing. We get the money. But, of course, like, there's a little girl that's scared in the bank. And I'm like, bring up my mask. And I'm like, don't worry. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, little girl. You know, it's, it'll be okay. And she gets a glimpse. She gets a glimpse. And so we're actually – there's someone hot on our trail. There's probably some annoying guy who's like, oh, I fix bikes and I bake. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll solve this crime. And then he's hot on our tail. And then and we almost get caught, and, and we, but we strike a deal. So we're like, we'll give you back the money we stole. We lie about it. We keep a little for ourselves. Everyone gets their kidney. Everyone, you know, no one's homeless. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm able to find other source of income. But we learn in the end what's most important, friends and family. They, the, that's how you're really rich in this life. That's what you actually need. Um, also, we uh, learned that, we also learned yeah. that your, uh, your impression of me is even more accurate than your Reagan impression. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a mic. <laughs> um, uh, um, and so, like, yeah, so I had this fantasy and I, I typed basically this entire thing into Google, just be like, ooh, like, it, it, would I be able to do this as an old guy? And it turns out it was 2017's Going in Style, starring Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine and Alan Arkin. And then I felt kind of stupid. And I'm like, man, was I incepted by the movie? Because I remember seeing it in theaters four times, and it was really <laughs> funny. So um, I feel like a, a bit of a, um, a poser or um, you know a, 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 a ripoff artist, you know, a thief, if you will. So that's going in style. Did I mm -hmm. not think that was going to come up ever in conversation? Wow. <laughs> All right, twenty-five million dollar budget, sixty million at the box office. Tidy little profit of probably about twenty million because I don't think they marketed it very well. So <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. This is a tough one because I feel like mm -hmm. I want to tune into Nathan's life every week. Yet yep. I want to be on the receiving end of Mitch's life after every mm -hmm. heist. Mm -hmm. But I think the one I want to keep coming back to is uh the hot priest baker surfer <laughs> detective. Because <laughs> I have no idea where it's gonna go each week. So, Nathan, you'll be winning the stare down for three points. Mitch, you'll be getting zero, which means, Nathan, we got to go back to you for your number four. Can you surf on the southern coast of England, by the way? Like, could you go down to, oh. to South oh, yeah. right? It can and be do done. Some surfing? It can be done. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. All right. All it's right. not, so, so so not going to be fun, fun, but you can do it. <laughs> I've all, you need to wear like a double thick wetsuit yeah. to do it. You, know, you wear one of those. Yeah. It's like the the onesie that's with the vertical stripes where you look like sort of like oh, a candy cane. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Those are sexy. That you change into on one of those little outhouses they put up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Speaking Bye. of outhouses, I never gave Mitch his score for his cottage cheese, which of course is one. Cause it's fucking cottage cheese. <laughs> what? You two are the are only you people, kidding me? You two are the only people in the world I know that eat it. Cottage cheese is a very close neighbor to ricotta, and both are incredible. So, enough, enough said. Please give me three points. Appreciate no, it. No, I've seen ricotta cheese okay. come out of children involuntarily. <laughs> I am not eating that shit. <laughs> no, thank you. Were you squeezing it out of them? What What do you mean? It looks like baby barf. I'm not eating that. <laughs> I am not eating that crap. You eat sour cream. It's the same damn thing. I don't want curdled <laughs> sour cream. <laughs> That sounds horrifying. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, I'm no sorry. more dairy. I'm no sorry. more dairy. We're upsetting Nathan's tummy. All right. Number four. What do you have, Nathan? My number four thing to do after you retire, the ever popular come out of retirement. This is <laughs> oh. a classic. This is a classic. It's been, and the bigger deal you make about retirement, the better it's going to be. Like, I mean, you got to announce it like 18 months in advance. So it's like a victory tour. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody, oh, I got to finish up this project. And then you start playing in different going away parties. And it's good to have groups of coworkers that are like spread out across the country. And then it's like, oh, well, this, mm -hmm. uh, the Tallahassee team is going to be in town this weekend. So we're going to have my Tallahassee going away party. And then the uh, Philadelphia team is going to be in uh, six weeks later. So we're going to have that one. And so you have like 18 going away parties. And then you have a big speech. If you can, if you're high profile enough where you can do a press conference, mwah, Beautiful. Get all the coverage oh, you man. can get, and then you go away for six months, a year, and then you come roaring you play some back. Baseball. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> you come roaring back just like it never happened. And everybody is so excited for you to come back that you have an even higher uh, portfolio, more cachet than you did the first time. Uh, hopefully things have gone terribly for everybody you know in the interim. So then you're, you've got mm -hmm. this the savior thing going. So this is this is really the way to do it. And I was looking at the list of people who've done this. In, in music alone, uh, some big names. Jay-Z has retired and unretired. Streisand has done a farewell tour and then come back. The Who had a farewell tour like 34 years ago, and they're on tour right now. Uh, <laughs> Phil Collins is, just had his last... I think this is going to be his last tour in Genesis because he literally sits in a chair on stage now. Uh, God bless the poor guy. He can't even stand up. Uh, Tina Turner. Oh and then my favorite one, Rick Astley retired in uh, age 29. And then in 2016, after the uh, Rick Roll phenomenon had come back, made him so popular that he actually did a tour and he released an album that went number one on some sort of chart. That's got to be wow. a great comeback story. And then, of course, you've got, you know, sports that happens all the time. Tom Brady, Bet Favre, Marshawn Lynch, Floyd Mayweather Jr., Marlon Mew, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan all did it. The most successful, of course, being uh, Michael Jordan. So so in, 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 your, in your situation, so you're going to retire and the, the bakery's not going to work out very well. Your wife disappears <laughs> and all of a sudden, hey, I'm back at work. Hey, guys, I'm back. Hey. Yeah. Is that what? Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I just head, head back, <laughs> just head back to my corner office. Uh, I'm a little yeah. more tan. Uh, uh -huh, I'm a little, sure. I'm a little more religious. I carry a rosary, uh, you know, wrapped around my uh -huh. wrist at, at times. Yeah. But well, the guilt of murdering your wife does weigh heavy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But the most important thing you carry is a mead notebook with a pencil. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. He's got <laughs> notes, folks. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're coming out of retirement, Mitch robbed a bank. We all know what happened to Mitch. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you two points for this, Nathan. I think it's it's not a one, it's not a three. It feels like a two, which means we're gonna go back to Mitch for his number three. What are you sure. doing in retirement, sir? My number three. I cannot wait to build an incredible condiment collection. So <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a whole maybe a whole extra fridge, and it's gonna like it's gonna be half weird hot sauces you know i'll be like oh i was in i was in taos new mexico in 2028 um and i got these really good tamales and i bought this hot sauce and it's called you know like like the devil's dry spit you know and then of course i'll have like devil's dry four different types of ketchup i'll have regular heinz of course you gotta have that organic um but then but then my you know so my so my fridge will be tons of different sauces all those kind of things but my favorite part of the condiment collection will be I'll I'll, I'll keep single use condiments so like ketchup packets mustard packets soy sauce packets from pivotal moments in my life like this mustard packet is from 2024 when Danny and I went to um Skippy Doo's hot dog shop and we decided we're going to buy a new couch, you know, and that's going to be <laughs> in the condiment collection. I'm going to have, you know, the salt packet from the, the scrambled eggs and toast that were not seasoned at all at the hospital the morning. Uh, my second son was born, you know, I'll have that one there too. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to have the, the, the fancy, the fancy silverware I'll, I'll get from uh, Brian Perky's big hog barbecue uh, right by the park. The same night we watch fireworks and I find out we're having a sixth kid, but I'm going to have that set there to remind myself, Mitchell, you got to think before you speak, you know, so that that civil war set's going to be there. So it's just going to be like beautiful moments from throughout my life. It's, I'm going to have a whole room just for those uh, memento condiments, I'll call them. Um, and uh, and sure, I might have a little bit of an ant problem, but I will go out and I'll, I'll, I'll clear those those fellas out every now and again. Um, but it's just I, I want to have just I want to have some sort of weird collections. I've started collections and I've and I've stopped collecting things. I think in my retirement, I'd love to collect. Um, you know, those that, that really just have a really specific, uh, condiment, um, memory, you know, li m memories linked to those, to those little sauces. So, okay. I'm hoping yeah. you're doing this just to keep your mind sharp and your old Ex age. Exactly. That's yes, fine. exactly. Exactly. I um, wish Danny was there right now so we can get her on the horn to ask her how she feels about instead of remembering the pain and everything she went through to deliver your second son, you were more concerned about the seasoning on your scrambled eggs. 
Well, you know what? She'll she'll appreciate it because she'll, she'll think it's sweet. She'll think it's sweet. Um, and I will, you know, the uh, the all inclusive um, month long trip to Paris that I'll give to her after, you know, I oh, I, I walk out of the room looking for seasoning while the second child is being delivered. Yeah, she's you know, getting I, an I, epidural. I will... She's got a ten inch needle in her back, and you're sitting there. You call these eggs? <laughs> exactly. I'll you know I'll be like, does anyone have some tomatillo sauce anywhere? <laughs> tomatillo salsa. Dry eggs, you know, that kind Who's of Who's running so. this kitchen at the <laughs> hospital? <laughs> what is that? I can see, I can see Mitch list. just, like, grabbing an apron and jumping behind the hospital cafeteria as his child is being born. He's this just... is how you make the eggs. Constant motion. <laughs> on the exactly. Heat, off the exactly. heat. Add the butter. Come on. Let's go. Fluffiness. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of people make jokes like, oh, hospital food isn't good. But there is some good quality food talent at hospitals because it has to be nutritious meals that, that you know, that are helping injured, sick people. So, you know, I, 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 should, I would expect more from a hospital at this point, you know. Um, and then, but then when, when Ponderman comes out, he'll be a strong young man and uh, he will also have an affinity for condiments, just like me. Ponderman so. Condiment Brinkman. That's his full name. Yep. <laughs> Ponderman Condiment Brinkman. God, that really rolls off the tongue. That sounds like a congressman, I think, probably. <laughs> The youngest congressman ever elected, younger than Madison Cawthorn, but just as crazy. But you know, on the other side. So, well, what I've always told Nancy is I, I <laughs> love the Jello at the Gerald R. Ford uh, Hospital there. <laughs> but moving on, we need to go to Nathan. Your number three, please. Well, I'm going with another classic. Uh, this oh is boy, getting up at four a.m. for absolutely no reason. I oh, do not. That's a good one. I do not that's understand this. You've worked your whole life. You can finally do whatever you want forever until you die. And people are still getting up at 4 a.m. Just just sleep in. Like, that's – everybody complains about, oh, I, I didn't get a good night's sleep. I wish I could sleep in. Did you sleep in on Saturday? No, I couldn't. I had to get up and do bye Like, nobody sleeps in. And then you can literally sleep for as long as you want. Get up when you want. Just let your body dictate whatever. And people are still getting up. They're setting alarms. They're heading to the diner so they can have coffee at 5.15. And then they're back there 12 hours later wrapping up the early bird special at 515. And then they just, they're just in a rush to go straight back to bed. Why get up early if you're just like, oh, seize the day, I get that. But it's everything is just a race to get right back into bed. It's a complete and total waste of time. And the worst part is it rubs off on the people around you. You remember you'd go stay at, <laughs> like with grandparents or other older relatives and it's like, all right, well, nice. They're the time lords for sure. Yeah, nice, <laughs> yeah. nice, relaxing uh, weekend away out on the farm. Uh, here we go. And it just, it bothers them if somebody is asleep past 7 a.m. It's, we have to go wake them up. They got to come down. They got, like, for what? Well, they got to come down. It's, we're all up. It, 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 it doesn't, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. We're all up. <laughs> that's the reason. That's, there's, there's well, absolutely no reason. And so it, I wouldn't mind, like, yeah, do whatever you want to do, but don't bring this down onto the rest of us who really do need to get sleep because we actually have shit to do. Um, it, it, it sounds like you might want to just address someone directly here with this. You just want to say, like, hey, uncle, uh, who, who, who is it? The uncle or is one of your parents that just makes you get up uh, early when you go home? to Well, the it's which, my which deceased grandmother that I'm talking to. but <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Betty, yeah. Betty, come on, Betty. Uh, just smash your alarm with a with a hammer what, what, and let. What was her let average time? Average alarm time? Oh, uh, I mean, probably yeah, probably probably seven. But that was, I mean, seven was the earliest I could get up. And if it was seven oh one, it was it was just there was oh, no okay. choice. And also, she, my God bless my grandma Betty, but she could snore like nobody's business. And she <laughs> and she always made my sister sleep in the same room as her. So my sister never got <laughs> a good night's sleep. And then Betty would have her up at the crack of 6 a.m. Away we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Picture Betty well, I, coming in with a corn husking hook and slapping your ass. Going, Get up. <laughs> Time for pancakes. <laughs> wow. I, I've I've slept in a room with with both of you before. Uh, you both also can can saw can saw a little log as I'm as I'm oh, told yes. I can from time to time. But my mine more I like just stop breathing. It sounds like I'm gonna die. Uh, but oh, that's, that's what my dad did. My dad said there was oh, one yeah. time where he uh, seventy seconds he went without taking a breath. <laughs> Wow, that's impressive. How did or, no, wait, no, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. They wondered why his oxygen level was so low, and he never felt rested. <laughs> oh. Does he does he have a, an apnea machine now? Is he, is he getting great sleep now? Oh, he refuses to use it. Oh, okay. okay. It's uncomfortable. 
<laughs> just, just, just as uncomfortable as I, I, I I'm going to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> just uncomfortable as getting corn shanked in the ass. By <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh boy, condiment collection. <laughs> Getting up at four AM. Condiment I mean, collection. I mean, they're both fun. They're both really fun. <laughs> Mitch, that's another one for you. No! <laughs> Come on. Uh that's another two for Nate. That's a solid uh, two. Um, any any neighbor that comes by, you know, if they're like, uh, could you have give a cup of sugar to spare? I'm like, no, but uh, but I got cocktail sauce, I got Heinz fifty seven sauce, I got Dijon, I got honey mustard. I got the packet of salt from the time my second kid was born. And the, no. So you can't help me and you're wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to do with old people is listen to them talk, you know? Well, they've got <laughs> stories. Um, we got to go to you, Mitchell. Number two, what do you have? Sure. Nancy, this is the ketchup packet from that time we went to the drive-in. <laughs> and- <laughs> And the waiter you showed didn't know me your skills. You were into you were you were in the car until twenty minutes in. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's a terrible, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible joke. It's still. Fun. Oh, I feel bad. Okay, my number two. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! That's what okay. makes you feel bad. Not not the eggs. No, whatever. The eggs. <laughs> Go. Oh, the egg. Yeah. Okay. I feel yeah. Sorry, Ponderman. In the future. Okay. Um, <laughs> My number two is a business, and it's going to be fucking ground zero for uh, senior citizen debauchery. Um, I'm calling it it, – it's going to be a resort, a restaurant, a bar, uh, an entertainment facility. It will be in eastern Nevada, which at this point uh, in our um, country's history will be the uh, the oceanfront. So it will be oceanfront property, nice. uh, and this will be like 2070 probably, you know. Um, California will be gone or uh, an island. So Eastern Nevada, boom, we're calling it Cocktail Bay. This puppy is going to be, there's going to be painkillers just like instead of olives on the bar, you know, little painkillers, boom. Take care of that knee pain. Take care of that tweak in the back. Or the painkiller, our signature cocktail, will also help with that, with those aches and pains. Um, There's going to be patong. There's going to be horseshoes. Of course, there's scratch offs. Um, and what I'm going to do, and this will help me um, uh, corner the market, if you will, we're, we're, we're going to run, quote unquote, live horse racing, but it's just going to be tape delays from the past, you know, however many years. <laughs> oh, <I'm> secretariat. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, and we're going to take bets on it. So um, we're, we're going to we're going to basically just be stealing people's money. Uh, but they'll think it's live horse racing. The TVs won't be that big. They'll be kind of far away, so no one will be able to tell. Um, and uh, so that'll be sort of like the, the underhanded part of the business. That's, that's the movie but, The Sting you're describing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I've You guys have noticed uh, some of my things are movies, aren't they? Oh, interesting. Oh, weird. Um, and, uh, but then also every single morning I'll wake up. I'll be exactly like Steve Jobs. I'll put on a Hawaiian shirt, Bahama shorts, uh, a pair of moccasin slippers with socks so they don't get stinky, uh, and a pair a pair of sunnies and a hat, and that'll be my uniform every single day. Um, I'll, I'll be known as Cocktail Bay Brinkman, um, uh, or CBB for short, uh, and um, that'll be a beautiful business. It'll be a beautiful life, and um, I'll just – and uh, every Sunday we'll do a pancake breakfast too. Well, I'll, I'll say mm. that. Bottomless pancakes on Sundays, so it helps soak up uh, that, that white wine and – and uh, gin killers from the day before. Bottomless yeah, pancakes exactly. is such a clever threat. It's like, oh, you can have as many pancakes as you want. Who wants more than like two or three pancakes? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. So, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll have a pre, pre-chunked bacon. So you don't have to chunk up your own bacon to put on top of your pancakes. It's just a top. Pre-chunked? The pre-chunked? bacon here? Honey, <laughs> the bacon here is pre-chunked. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wow, that's pretty sweet. Cocktail Bay, come on down. Have your drinks and pal around at Cocktail Bay. (laughs) Right off of Route 59 in eastern Nevada, right by Trumbull County and just outside of Peacock, Nevada. Come on down to Cocktail Bay. There it is. The only downside to this I see is they will still want to keep the heat at 85 in their fucking rooms. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, you know what? 
that will save us a lot of energy because we can That's, let the heat in during the day and we can close it up at night. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just little human lock boxes just to mm-hmm. keep them baking at eighty five. Oh, and, and, and also, I hope at this point in time, us as old people will understand fitness is very important. So, like, people know, like, you do 10 squats a week or whatever, and, like, your body will be so much better. So, I'm also thinking have, like, hot guy uh, bartenders and waiters who are all 60 and older, you know? So, oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. More old, importantly, old pieces Nathan, of beef. So, no, big, yeah, big, big teriyaki jerky leather guys. But mm-hmm. Nathan and I really <laughs> need to know. What's what's the table game room like at this establishment? Is there enough mm, people the, to, to keep us going? The, there's going to have a, a seashell shell game. So a oh. seashell game. Yeah, there we go. That'll be a fun one. And also, of course, Go Fish is going to be a big game for us. And then also uh, Uno Flip. So <laughs> which is, <laughs> flip. similar to regular Uno, but just there's there's a little twist on well, it. I guess so. Brian and I will be <laughs> shooting dice in the, by the dumpster behind the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'll and I'll be and I'll be shooing you back to work like get back to the fryers, fry boys, and then you'll be like, oh, okay. You think we're all betting on the horses? We're actually betting on the li- the geckos that are racing in the alley behind the, <laughs> behind the dumpster. Oh boy, Cocktail Bay, what a nice uh, seaside sound for the middle of the desert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, number two, Nathan, what you got, pal? Number two is uh, it's kind of an extension of the getting up at 4 a.m. for absolutely no reason because it's completely uh, useless waste of time. And that's to run for office. And <laughs> I, oh, that's awesome. I don't understand why in retirement? People, people would want to run for office in retirement because it's not giving back or shaping the world to, to leave it better for the next. It's just you're bored and you want power. And it's, it's even worse when people who are – politicians and then they serve their term and then they get out of it and they're like, ah, I better go back. I haven't fucked with everybody's future enough. It's like, just, <laughs> just wait it out and die. You don't need to like, let the people who are actually going to be alive in 50 years, make some decisions about what's going on. Well, you're going to be just complete stardust. Uh, but I did, Why? I did find some interesting, <laughs> interesting uh, lists here. So did you know that these presidents actually came back after losing and tried to run for president again. Martin Van Buren, mm-hmm. Millard Fillmore, Grover, Grover Cleveland, who won. Teddy Roosevelt and Herbert Hoover all tried to run for president like a few years after they had been ousted, which I thought it was mm-hmm. crazy. And yeah. also, John Quincy Adams, the star of the famous uh, Lost Uber Cinco episode that we'll be releasing well <laughs> after we've all retired, <laughs> um, <laughs> as it will ruin our careers, uh, <laughs> whether it's in this career or anything else we're doing. But he actually served in the House of Representatives after being president, as did John Tyler and Andrew Johnson. And then the granddaddy of them all, bathtub man, William Howard Taft, was the president. And then he had to be the chief justice, had to head up Mm -hmm. two different branches of government. I just just take a breather, guy. I just I don't understand the the need to have your your hands on all the, the moving chess pieces that make up our republic so just driving you on it's like if you stop you'll die because that's you're thriving off of people's life energy i yeah i can't do it i don't blame you i don't blame you i don't think i would want to do any work in retirement that is actually requires true brain power that doesn't actually result in any form of entertainment afterwards like i can see myself being older and wanting to like make something but even if it's, I can't see myself wanting to be like, can't wait to go into work and pretend to read laws. <laughs> that sounds so <laughs> fucking horrible. But also, why would you want to be involved with like the stakes anymore? Where like there's, yeah. there's stakes of what will happen. Like I, I mean, mean, like you can just house, stop. Well, yeah, Mignon, that, New York Strip. That uh, that I can get behind. But okay. for just sure. just like, well, I guess you know, I did my best. I tried to make the world a slightly better place. Did I? Did I not? It's too late. I'm just gonna ride it out till I die. Like this is the bed I made. I can sleep in it. If I'm retired, I'm pretty comfortable. So at least I made myself reasonably happy. Might as well enjoy it. Well, I think two termer. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I, I was gonna say in most in most men that run for president there's a a deep dark 
vacuous, never ending hole to be filled with daddy's love or, uh, or, or, or the image of a mother, um, or the, you know, the accolades of, of peers and, and step upons. Actually, um, I, I that, do remember you know, a quote where John F. Kennedy said, I only rain because my mother didn't love me very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was out. I was out chasing a kangaroo and thought, "Hey, maybe I should be president." <laughs> I'm running for president because there's a new day in America coming. A day where we feed our dogs, we house our old people, and we make cars right here in America. Chevrolet, and then that's- <laughs> Chevrolet. Oh, Join boy. us next week for the all Reagan 100th episode of Persingo. <laughs> I think that's a good way to be like, we built this beautiful uh, palace gleaming. There's there's stained glass. There's a uh, there's an even bigger rose window. We have a beautiful, beautiful stage built. And then we walk out the back door and set the whole thing on fire as we walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the doing 100th episode of all Reagan all the time. <laughs> Oh, Reagan, all the time. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mitch, four cocktail bay, because I cannot wait to mm-hmm. retire my final days there. You're getting three points. Nathan, uh, this is a great. I understand why you're upset people are doing this, but I don't think I can give it three points because it would suck to run for office. So you'll be getting two for your number two. But now we're on to our number ones. Mitch, take us home. What do you got? My number one is something that um, I cannot wait to do, and that is number one activity in retirement: hang around diners looking for young people with no direction in their life. <laughs> so, <laughs> this this is a corollary to what you've been doing for the last several years of hanging around diners looking for old people to give you direction. <laughs> exactly, yes. exactly. I'm I'm looking for a life coach, and I want to be that life coach when I'm older. You know, this this one is partially inspired by. I just listened to an interview with Nick Swartzen, and he was talking about when he's not working, when he's not touring, when he's not shooting a movie or something. The man likes to drink, and he talked about going to his local diner at 7 a.m. and having cocktails from 7 a.m. <laughs> until his local bar opens up at 2 p.m. And he goes to his local bar till 6 p.m. and then naps. <laughs> and then goes back out and drinks till the last call. Jesus. And he'll do this for like a month on end. And I'm like, oh my God. And so I would just love to catch a young Nick Swartzen at a diner, you know, just sucking down Jack and Cokes at 7 30 a.m. and be like, hey, bud, you want to read the paper with me? Here, try the culture section, you know, and just kind of push it towards him and just try and get in his head and trying to figure out why he's trying to, again, fill this, this deep vacuous hole with, with, with alcohol uh, and pancakes. And, you know, just the conversations you'd have, the wisdom you'd be able to share, um, the stories you'd be able to tell about uh, that, that one floating shelf you had to you had to rehang three times before it, it was, you know, level uh, in your third house, you know, where your where your bowling trophy sat. Um, you know, those kind of stories, those those kind of riveting tales about um, home maintenance, I think, would really, really hit home with some young people. And, you know, if if I if I got a big enough group. Of you know shiftless you know d- directionless uh, little ragamuffins maybe I start a basketball team you know and then I'm coaching basketball and I'm coaching you know I'm I'm not saying it's Catholic but I'm bringing sort of like the Ten Commandments of basketball to them um, so I'm making them better people I'm encouraging education I'm encouraging reading but I'm really I'm I'm teaching them how to backdoor cut how to read a D how to how to drop uh, a pass in, in between the defense just so sweetly um, but. At the end of the day, I want to just – if they don't have a, a father figure in their life, I want to be that. And if they have a daddy, then I want to become their new daddy kind of thing. So, um, And I think I would be able to you know, point them point them towards their North Star and give them that, a nice little push or a little slap on the tuchus and say, come on, get going there, doggy. You know, hoo like get going, you know, make something of yourself. So, you see um, that man at the end of the bar? He wants to be your daddy. <laughs> and then I, and, and he, they, they look at me and I go, and I like do a, you know, I, I tip of the hat, you know, and I'm, and yes. I, and I, of course I'm going to pay for their breakfast. Of course I'm going to do that. So, um, but, and, and I'll be eating beef hash every day. So, mm-hmm. so you'll be the, 
<laughs> farting, smelly sugar daddy <laughs> <laughs> who has ink all over his hands. You from kids, the you kids want to play some basketball? I brought enough pairs of shorts in my car for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, I, I've, I've got a sack of pennies and a sack of shorts. Let's go. <laughs> what, what size are you? <laughs> What size are you? <laughs> oh, I only who, brought. Who was all so extra happy smalls. when they finally got to stop wearing pennies when they were in grade school? Did you guys? Did you guys ever wear those? Yeah, that was. Pennies? Why did they call? They called them pennies. It was weird. That I feel like that term was outdated right before we even started using it. And there were jerseys. I have no yeah. idea what you guys so were talking about. Just like a red, a was, red jersey and a yellow jersey. You'd be to, to like to, for to what team oh, you were on in kickball yeah. or whatever. The yeah, like we had those. I mean, I don't know what we called and them. And they oh, did they smell? They got washed maybe. Oh, yes. yeah. Once every crop top, semester. Crop top mesh jerseys. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, Man. God. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd have a sack of pennies and a sack of shorts and, you know, f- at least four balls in the trunk. So, um, I was trying know, to I- figure out why you wanted to give them like a sack of copper Lincoln. Like, I didn't <laughs> understand what the fuck you were talking about. Well, you can buy yourself something nice with these. <laughs> You used to be able to buy a candy with one of these, but now you need daddy's credit card. So here we go. Let's go to the store. Uh, but uh, no, yeah. So basically just just be that old guy at the diner that that is just able to offer some advice, tell a terrible story, um, you know, w- wear a hat that looks like it's 40 years old um, and, and just enjoy some beef hash. And of course, I'm going to know all the – all the waiters and waitresses' names and the cooks' names, so that so these directionless people will already feel like they have a community here um, at the at, at the diner. So I'm I'm, I'm going to refrain from naming the diner because I can do this at any diner. So that's true. I I just want to put this in your head. You said a hat yep. that's 40 years old. Yep. So we'll say it's 2070, where you're this old man at the diner. Mm-hmm. You better pay attention to what the styles are in 2030, because that's the old timey hat you'll be wearing. That's true. I actually, I, I I might already own the hat I'll be wearing when I'm that old. Isn't that fun to think about? Wow. No, you you, Mitch, you already own the hats that guys that old right now are wearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, true. Boy, oh boy, do you have more condiments than them? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Nathan, truly take us home with your number one. Oh uh, well, what do you have for us? At, at long last, it's finally time for me to face my fears. That's my number one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to face my fears because I am. As you both know, afraid of almost everything. So I am going to <laughs> climb to the top of a lighthouse that has no railing, and I am going to oh. slice some peppers by candlelight. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I am going to go skydiving. And uh, will I open the shoot or not? I don't know, because then I'm going to face the greatest fear of all and die alone at age 105 <laughs> in a skydiving accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was this was inspired by when uh, Betty White died uh, a few months ago, and somebody said, "Somebody uh, I was around said, oh, Betty White died,'" and somebody else said, "Oh, what happened?" <laughs> and then, with without missing a beat, somebody jumped in and said, "Snowmobiling accident, just complete dead bang, <laughs> brought the house down." So I want to I want to be that guy. I want to push it to the absolute limit. I'm going to finally go through that exposure therapy. My uh, mental health professionals have been telling me I need to do to face all these neurotic fears I have. I'm going to be juggling uh, broken liquor bottles. I'm going to be uh, doing the tightrope um, across the uh, two marina towers down in uh, downtown Chicago. And I am going to <laughs> I'm going to light a campfire, perhaps even in a fireplace inside my own home. It's it's wow. I'm finally going to do it uh, because at this point I'll have nothing left to fear because I've led a lo- long, beautiful 105 year life. I and you know, I've, I have a question. We went camping however many years back now. It's like whatever, 12, no, 10 years back, <laughs> seven, nine years back, seven years. Yeah. back. There we go. <laughs> you know, time. Yeah. Um, every second is a smaller percentage of your life. Than one before. <laughs> OK, um, when we were camping, we, we built a big old fire. Were you terrified the whole time around that? Fire? I. Uh, I I, you've, I would keep quite a uh, distance from it because I'm always uh, a wide I'm berth, always afraid will. a okay. wide berth. I'm always afraid yeah. I will fall into the fire. I will trip and fall in, or sure. even worse, even worse, I will accidentally push somebody else in. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Again, accidentally. This is this is the murderer, and you'd be like, oh my god, I retired. Well, and then, I, just, I pushed four yeah. people into fire. Well, then, <laughs> then the guilt would just be I unbearable. Can't stop. <laughs> 
I mean, disfiguring myself is one one level of terrible, but but ruining the beautiful faces of you and Logan and Steve and Mark Berry, that would have been too much That's for true. me to handle. Because <laughs> you'd have to look at them the rest of your life. That's horrifying. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, are, are there any other... Um, Oh, uh, what what about facing your fear of of winning at FIFA? <laughs> oh, that's good. That was a good uh-huh. one. Got you. Uh-huh. Yeah, got you good. Well, you, oh. Mitch, Mitch, you better be afraid if you keep winning because I'm going to snap one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> the one time you guys go glamping and he brings FIFA out next to the camp. <laughs> 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 <Mitch is going. laughs> Oh boy! Well, that brings our game to an end here. I have tallied up the scores. Okay. Um, Mitch, Did I win? You have eight points. That but seems I'm giving like a lot. you the the three point Reagan bonus. Yes. So you're going to get eleven. Oh, oh. But that falls short to Nathan's twelve. Oh. No Reagan. No Reagan <laughs> bonus. Nathan is still the winner at twelve to eleven. Jeez. I was I was uh, considering a- doing like Michael Caine, but just being like, hey, my name is Ronald Reagan. <laughs> like that's that's the closest to a record I can get. That is exactly <laughs> how Michael Caine would play Ronald Reagan. Yeah. He does no other voices. I am All the right. president of the United States. I am of the America. president. <laughs> now we can't leave without revealing my fast five, which of course was the ways I could make my first million, according to the psychic down the block. Number five. Apparently, I invent a sock that never stinks. I ask her how I invent the idea, and she says it will reveal itself in time. Oh, I can't wait. Number four, (laughs) I get really into investing and figure out how to short mushrooms. I take the profits from that and try and bring back the helicopter cabs of New York in the 50s. Is it a successful venture? Time will tell, she says. Number three, (laughs) apparently I just stop being shitty with money. One day I cut all expenses and live off the grid with satellite internet and drop ship baby animal t-shirts to suburban wine moms. No inventory. (laughs) It's a gold mine. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. You just said off the grid, but you have. Okay. I know how to use a, I know how to use a, I know how to use a VPN in the woods. Oh, there we go. (laughs) Off the grid. (laughs) Number two. I get really into supplement pyramid schemes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one. All of my dreams apparently come true. I have a sickening amount of shows on TV, but you know, they're all good. But when I ask, when will this come true? She says in my final days, my entire life will suck, but I will find success the Colonel Sanders way late in life and with a vengeance. So I can't enjoy anything. (laughs) Any <laughs> thanks, <Jeez>. psychic. <laughs> that has been this week's edition of Uber Cinco from atop a flaming lighthouse surrounded by the sharpest knives possible has been. It's me, Nathan Henningfent. And that guy at the end of the counter eating his pancakes, not just just looking to touch your ass is uh, Mitch Brinkman. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, I've been your big wet boy, Brian Ernst. And as Bisbear always says, close your damn tabs and open a new browser window. You're not a fucking animal. <laughs> Avita Zane and adios. Oh, Nancy. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> You've just listened to Uber Cinco, a production of UBK Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your fine podcasts from. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash UBK Studios. Every little bit helps us keep the lights on and the bill collectors at bay. Keep tabs on us on all the social media at UBK Studios, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see that we really are just a bunch of good Midwestern boys. (laughs) 